So I was recently asked a question by a patient that I haven't been asked in a long time, which is, do I have clinically isolated syndrome, or CIS? And I answered them that I don't personally use the term CIS anymore. I don't diagnose anyone with CIS anymore, even though I have in the past. By the way, I'm walking around on vacation in downtown Portland. They say it's not safe to walk around at night here, so I figure if the camera's on, I'm a little bit safer. No one wants to commit a crime on camera. Anyway, you may not have heard of this term, but it used to be used very commonly. And in some sense, words don't matter, but my experience is that they do. When a diagnosis is in the chart, people act on that. They treat people differently based on that name. And sometimes it has implications in terms of insurance, coverage of medications, what people think about their own disease. So I personally think that nomenclature is important and it influences how I treat people with multiple sclerosis and related conditions. So anyway, the term CIS, clinically isolated syndrome, refers to people who have a single demyelinating event but do not meet the diagnostic criteria for multiple sclerosis. For example, maybe they have optic neuritis, inflammation of the optic nerve, which could cause pain and vision loss in one eye, but they don't have multiple sclerosis, or they have transverse myelitis, inflammation of the spine causing numbness or weakness of the extremities, or brainstem lesion causing double vision or vertigo. Now, the diagnostic criteria for MS are quite complicated. I have a separate video linked in the description below explaining it in detail, but essentially there are two elements to it. One of them is dissemination in space. It's not monosclerosis or one lesion. There's damage to different parts of the nervous system. If you have optic neuritis 10 times, but there's no damage to the brain or to the spinal cord, you don't have multiple sclerosis. You have creon or chronic recurrent inflammatory optic neuritis or something else causing recurrent optic neuritis. Sometimes people could have recurrent transverse myelitis, which actually can be a form of multiple sclerosis in my personal opinion. But anyway, the point is, there's another element. So dissemination in space, there are multiple lesions. And for most people, this is very obvious. You do an MRI, there are white matter lesions in different areas of the brain and in the spine. So there's very clearly dissemination in space. But there's an, another element, which is dissemination in time. MS isn't just a one-time disease. You don't just have optic neuritis once and then nothing else happens. It's a chronic disease. You can get recurrent inflammation or ongoing inflammation of the nervous system. And this is dissemination in time. Now, in the past, people often had one attack and maybe they had an MRI and lesions were typical of multiple sclerosis, but they didn't meet the diagnostic criteria for MS because they didn't meet the dissemination in time criteria. So they often had to wait for a second attack. And typically people were not treated with disease modifying therapy in this situation. And people started to think, well, these people seem to have a high rate of getting multiple sclerosis. So maybe it's a good idea to treat them before they get a second attack. And of course, it was pharmaceutical companies who were thinking of this because they wanted more people to take their medications, but it was also doctors thinking this because they thought it was silly to not treat someone they thought had a very high risk of subsequent attacks. And indeed they did. And so this idea of clinically isolated syndrome was you have an attack, but you didn't have a second attack, and so you don't technically have multiple sclerosis, but you have a very high risk of MS in certain circumstances. For example, there's a famous study published in 1999 called the Optic Neuritis Treatment Trial. And people had optic neuritis, but did not have multiple sclerosis. And the best predictor of who went on to develop MS was the MRI of the brain. And if you had eight or more lesions typical of MS, you actually had a 100% risk of getting multiple sclerosis. So doctors were thinking, hey, you know, even though it's clinically isolated syndrome, you essentially have MS. We may as well just treat people now. And sure enough, there were multiple randomized control trials done with different medications, and it was in fact successful. There was a benefit to treating earlier. Now the problem with these trials 
is that virtually everyone in these studies, by modern diagnostic criteria, wouldn't have clinically isolated syndrome. They would just have multiple sclerosis. And the reason for that is that the diagnostic criteria have changed. They've essentially become more lenient over time. For example, if you have a single attack and meet the dissemination in space criteria, you have an MRI and it shows multiple lesions, not just one lesion that explains the symptoms. If you have a spinal tap and it shows the finding seen in 90% of people with multiple sclerosis that you have more than one oligoclonal band or antibody in the spinal fluid that is not in the blood, you would now meet the diagnostic criteria for multiple sclerosis even though you just had one attack. Also, often someone has a single attack, they have an MRI showing multiple lesions, and on neurological exam they have obvious signs of having other damage to the nervous system that happened remotely. For instance, someone has optic neuritis, maybe their vision recovers, they have an MRI of the brain, they have lesions typical of multiple sclerosis, they have an MRI of the spine, they have lesions there too, and then on exam they have like obvious vibration loss in the lower extremities and brisk reflexes suggesting they had mild transverse myelitis in the past consistent with their MRI and that person had two attacks maybe they just weren't diagnosed with the first attack maybe the symptoms were subtle and they went away quickly and they never saw a doctor or maybe they didn't even cause noticeable symptoms at all even though there's an objective neurologic deficit on examination the point is that almost all of those people in those clinical trials have multiple sclerosis and so what do those trials even mean? They're just studies on people with multiple sclerosis. So the people who might have clinically isolated syndrome today are people that say have an attack, but they don't have extensive lesions typical of multiple sclerosis. Their MRI is equivocal, or maybe they have a spinal tap that does not show the findings seen in most people with multiple sclerosis. The problem with that is those are red flags for misdiagnosis. A lot of people who have an MRI of the brain that's not typical of MS, they end up just not having MS. A lot of people who have a spinal tap that's negative that are diagnosed with MS, sometimes the diagnosis is just wrong. That's just simply a red flag and doctors have to be extremely, extremely careful about it. So someone in modern times, let's say they have optic neuritis, to use the same example. And maybe they have an MRI that shows a few non-specific lesions. They're not clearly consistent with multiple sclerosis. That person is a good candidate for either a spinal tap, which we don't do as often because MRI is so good and so accurate in helping us diagnose multiple sclerosis, or perhaps just monitoring. A lot of those people may not be recommended to start disease-modifying therapy. Another thing is, let's say someone has optic neuritis, but their MRI of the brain is completely normal. Now to go back to that trial I mentioned, the optic neuritis treatment trial, if you actually had a stone cold normal MRI of the brain, now MRIs are actually better now than they were in 1999, so to have a negative MRI now is more meaningful because they're even better at detecting small lesions. Obviously, MRI isn't a perfect study in general, but modern MRI is much better than prior MRI before 2000. But even based on the study back then, if you had a negative MRI, your risk of MS wasn't very high. It was only about 15% in long-term follow-up studies. So you probably weren't going to develop multiple sclerosis. And of course, in modern times, we have other testing to find other diseases like lupus or Sjogren's syndrome associated optic neuritis or neuromyelitis optica or MOGAD, myelin oligodendrocyte glycoprotein associated disease. So we can pick up other things and be more accurate in our diagnosis. And so my personal opinion is I just don't really think there's much of a point in diagnosing people with clinically isolated syndrome. And when we do that in modern times, it doesn't refer to the same thing as when that term was historically used, which is essentially, as I said before, just multiple sclerosis. And I think a more appropriate thing if someone has
maybe a single demyelinating event. Their MRI isn't strongly typical of multiple sclerosis, but maybe it's equivocal. And you know, a lot of people in the general population has have white matter lesions. And sometimes there are in between cases where the MRI isn't 100% clear. It would be reasonable to say someone has possible multiple sclerosis. That's an old school term that also isn't used anymore. But I think it's a good term in certain circumstances. And as I said, that person maybe could have a spinal tap to help clarify the diagnosis, or maybe just have follow-up MRIs to see if they develop new lesions. And of course, this is all individualized, so talk to your own provider. But I'd be interested to know if anyone watching this has been diagnosed with clinically isolated syndrome, were you subsequently diagnosed with multiple sclerosis? Were you treated with disease-modifying therapy even when the diagnosis was just CIS? Has anyone been diagnosed with CIS and then never developed a subsequent attack, never got multiple sclerosis? And to the few clinicians who are watching this video, do you agree that CIS is dead and simply doesn't exist anymore? And let me know if you have ideas for other videos.